Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the instructions in the video description. All right, cool. So, yeah, go. So, 2, 5, 1K, 1K effective too, right? Yeah, just over one K okay. uh, yep. with the main with the main villain. Yep. So I'm I'm probably viewed as basic uh, ABC tag. I bounce between one three and two five because I table select when the game looks good. I sit in two five. Okay. Um, uh, villain one's not really interesting. He's got he's a young back back kid I've never seen before. He's got about eight hundred. He opens to twenty. From what position? Caller uh, for like. Uh, late earlier like middle position middle okay, position. If you want to 20 okay yep and a couple of callers that are in uh, don't mean anything the main villain villain two hijack calls and he's the one who covers me he's uh early 30s he's more aggressive than most i've played with him once before uh, I don't think he's pro. I think he's a serious wreck but he's aggressive okay and i'm on the i'm on the button with nine ten uh of diamonds Okay, so, so so villain one opens from earliest position. I'll put EP, I'll play plus one. You're saying that there are two yeah. calls in between, and now the hijack also calls. So so it's open, and then three calls in front of you, and you're on the button with nine ten of diamonds. Yeah, and uh, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll three bet this uh, squeeze this yep. time. I decided to flat. So yeah, I mean here with that dead money out there, I actually think that I would be squeezing quite a bit. Um, okay. I don't know if you caught the last caller, like, you know, I was just talking about how no, I didn't. live players just yeah. play too many hands. You actually get an overlay on, right. on the dead money when you have a, like a bunch of calls in there in between, you've got three calls. There are times where I will flat cause I want to keep somebody in the hand or I'm specifically targeting someone, you know, I mean, that's where you sort of like a lot of times these guys, it doesn't really happen that much anymore. Cause not a whole lot of people play online, but when people are transitioning, from online to live right after Black Friday, you would just see these inner, I call them like internet punks that were just, they didn't get it. Like they're just three betting a certain hand in this position with absolutely no concept as to why you might not want to do that and keep somebody in. Um, those guys didn't really last that long, but I mean, that's how I would look at this particular situation. So I would actually probably three bet a fair amount, but okay. You call, what about the blinds? Uh, they, uh, they do not call. Okay. Uh, but uh, so it's uh, but I call so there's uh, is it five ways to the yeah flop? five ways mm -hmm. yeah like 107 or something like that in the yeah. flop but the flop comes out uh, five of clubs jack of diamonds queen of diamonds so uh, open and straight flush draw jack of clubs excuse me five of clubs jack of diamonds queen of diamonds you have nine ten of diamonds bottom bottom oh, open and fifteen out draw okay great yeah 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 uh -huh. uh, the uh, Villain one, uh, see bets to sixty. Okay. Villain, villain two calls pretty quickly, and I raise to one seventy five. So villain one has eight hundred, right? You said he started the Correct. hand with eight hundred, and what? And villain two, who's the caller? How much does he have? He, uh, he he's covered. He's from like fifteen hundred, like a lot more. Yeah. A lot more than so you so so he covers he, you. He You're covers about one k effective. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so me. villain two covers and calls. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I would love to raise here. Obviously, you've got a lot of equity. I mean, it's yeah. interesting that this guy's betting into four people. I mean, if you're yeah. talking about villain one, if he's any type of player, like this shouldn't really be a C-bet bluff, right? I mean, he could have like the nut flush draw, I guess. But you block. Yeah, I mean, you have the ten of diamonds in your hand, so it would only be like ace king of diamonds, right? Or, you know, ace five of diamonds. So, But you see people bet like multi-way. And to be honest with you, in a, in a regular live 2-5 game, if I open like ace-queen or kings or aces and I get four callers, yeah, I'm going to bet the flop too. But I'm just saying that usually it's representative of something when somebody bets, yeah. right? So, yeah, I but I mean, if you're a guy that's got this image of like, yeah, moving up from 1-3 to 2-5, yeah, I love to race here. Um, occasionally, you actually might get out a, a, a better draw than you too. That's not, you know, like if a guy has like king-8 of diamonds or some bullshit in the middle, you want that hand out of there, right? Um, right. I'm talking about from V2, yeah. so I would I would raise here quite a bit. And what do you think of the sizing? I made it, I made it 175. So he bet 60 into 100 call, so that's okay. 2 60 into 100 is 220. Once you call 280, I mean a pot size raise would would have been to like 350. So that's yeah, kind of small. small. But then again, yeah. your stack is such that I mean I would probably go like 240. 
to 250 maybe. And then if you get called, you can decide whether you want to move all in on turn or go half pot and then sort of give up. I mean, the reason to go small sizing here um, is because you want to leave stacked up to bluff him off. Like you go 170 instead of going like 250 at the stacked up, then you're going to have a little bit more maneuverability. I just don't know if you're going to get some immediate folds that you might. Like, if you were playing me, and I bet the flop with ace-queen, or like kings or aces, 60 call, and then you made it like 250, I might just fold in a live game. Whereas if you made it like 150 or 170, I might call. I'm, I'm just saying, like, that's kind of where I'm going with it. But I don't know if your idea was that you wanted to leverage your stack on layer streets. That's why you made it 170. No, actually, I, I, I'm think like in when I in my email, I just think I put it. I, I think it was just too small. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> really, I, I was trying to get a mediocre queen. I mean, it's not always game. too small. It's it, like I said, if it's done with a purpose where you want to leverage, like later on, you want to leave yourself stack right. depth, you know. But okay, so you make it one seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense. It just yeah. wasn't my thought process at the time. Yeah. Uh, so the original the V one tanks and calls. Okay. And then, uh, but he tanks for a bit, and then he calls. And villain two now back raises to four twenty five. I did not expect that. So V one calls villain two back raises to four twenty five. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. I mean, here's the thing, like, we've actually had calls like this, so let's take a look here on paper. Um, let's say V1 had folded, you would just have an easy call. I mean, when you look, if let's say V1 had folded, we'll talk about when V1 calls, what that means, but if uh, V1 folded and you were heads up, you would have just an easy call. I mean, V2 here is going to have a set of fives, I feel like, a ton, or a hand that he thinks is the nuts that he was slow playing. It's going to be queen jack plus here, pretty much, I think, almost always, like in the 90 percentile, yeah. right? Set of jacks, set of fives, queen jack. So he's never folding. So there would be no reason why you would ever raise him back if you were heads up. You could call, right? And maybe he makes a sizing mistake on the turn, or you wait for the board not to pair, and then you do the math if he shoves the turn. Um... With V1 in there, there might be a hair of consideration again that you may want to drive out a superior draw. Like, if you had the nut flush draw here, right? Like, if you had ace-10 of diamonds, there would be no reason why you would ever raise, really. Because you're going to be up against a made hand here from this guy anyway, so why do you want to drive the other guy out, right? Now, there's only a couple of combinations of better draws that V1 has, right? Because you have 9-10 of diamonds. It Ace King of Diamonds, Ace Ten of Diamonds, and maybe like like I said, the nut flush draw, like Ace Five of Diamonds. Yeah. If you jam, if you jam, I'll he's not. Ace uh, 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 right, right, right. If you jam, yeah, he's not going to fold those hands anyways. I feel like because he's going to get priced in. So, you might as well call and try to lure him in. I feel like it. It kind of seems okay. like he might have like some sort of like hand that is mediocre. Or a hand that he's not sort of comfortable going in with, like aces or kings or ace queen. I don't see a point in driving him out when you're up against a made hand here, anyways. Do you see what I'm saying? Like you're up against a made hander in the middle. There's no point in driving the other worse made hand out, and you're not going to be able to drive a better draw out because he's going to be getting a price. So that's sort of my take on it. I would probably just call. Okay. Yeah, now that you now that you say it that way, I, yeah. I do get that. I wasn't really thinking about. I figured V one wasn't real strong because I don't think you would just call yeah. with that draw board with like a set or anything like that. I didn't think V two had a. I didn't think he had queens or jacks or ace king of diamonds because he three bets all of those. So either uh, the back raise is just the, that back raise is just going to be yeah. queen jack plus here, just a ton. So what would yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I ended up just jamming. And uh, I think that calling is superior, though. I mean, a lot of people in chat yeah. are saying, like, you do have, like, a bunch of equity even. I mean, you're probably, even against, like, queen, like... even against Queen Jack Plus, you're probably in the 40s, right? Um, well, it, it, against the set, I'm in, I'm in like, 41, 42. So that's what like I mean. That. Yeah, so Queen Jack Plus, yeah. you're probably, like, 40, 45. But the thing is, is that, like, still, you want to play the hand for the most amount of profit, right? That's that's why I was asking asking the question is what's yeah. the most easy play here, and yeah, I, I 
for some reason, I thought maybe there's a hair or fold up good if I jam because that looks really, really strong. But really, there's not going to be a, there's not going to be a back yeah. raise from that. From I mean, you're yeah. looking at a field player, right? Who is not the preflop right. raiser, who has back raised three bet. And again, yeah. back raise means that somebody has called, gets a raise, right. correct, and then re raise. So they call and right. then re raise. Like there's no. Yeah. Back raise yeah, fold think... button from a field player at two five. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah, I, just, I, I just didn't. I don't see that very often. So. Yeah, no. Back yeah, raise is very it, very strong. Yeah, for sure. In, in hindsight, I do think uh, I do think calling would have been more EV because uh, V one might have called. But, um. Uh, yeah. So you jam. Yeah. I jam. V one folds pretty quickly. V two's not happy. He calls. Uh, with pocket fives, and I run out and make a ace of diamonds, and now so um, a king also comes on the river. But anyway, I, I ended up making the hand. Now, didn't you also ask yeah. in the in the? So I'm going to put ace of diamonds, king of spades. Didn't you also ask in your email that you were a little bit concerned that if you just called that you might not get action if you make your hand on yeah. the turn? Is that right? That was that was my one other question. Is if yeah. I just call and a diamond comes, uh huh, or or a card that comes that makes an obvious straight. Um, do I? Does he ever? Does, would he ever fold? Yeah, I don't think so. Fold. I don't think so okay. because here's the thing: like when you look at the stack sizes, like what is he going to do? Like say you call, right? And let's say the other guy folds anyways, right? right? So you put in four fifty on the, you put four fifty on the flop, so that's eight fifty. I mean, the pot's going to be like a thousand, right? On the and then right. Right. you only have there's only five hundred left effective. I mean, yep. what is yep. he going to do? Like, like is he going to just check fold the set? I just I don't know. I mean. It's kind of a complicated – it is a little bit of a complicated kind of scenario when you have a hand that has so much equity. It, it's almost more of a, an Omaha scenario because people will check fold, you know, big hands in Omaha or just because, just you know, you're going to have so many hands. Um, I mean, it, it, if he had Queen Jack and, like, the turn was the king of – excuse me, if he had Queen Jack specifically and the turn was, like, the ace of diamonds, you know, that might be – can he continue on for a half half a stack? Pro- he probably shouldn't, right? But right. that's, I mean, that's about it, you know. Yeah, but well, that, uh, that was one of the other things in my mind that made me the tip tip over to jamming. But in hindsight, I do agree that calling is probably better. Yeah, because I might be able to get V one's money as well if I hit because I need to, I needed to hit. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's really what the issue is. But thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.